what's going on everyone is Chris and welcome back time to help Tommy here you we could use the blue sheets to make a sofa for it okay so we have a decision to make between the three guy people here I'm pretty sure the way the way at least this is the way I'm assuming this it's who ends up coming over and who doesn't unless they all do come over um, so who needs their friend more? <laughs> or their people more? Um, does Linda need her oh, mom and dad? Me. Does Tommy need his friend? Or does Dan need his friend? Do I want to leave Linda in the dust? This time around, because I've lost. I, I mean, I think it's Linda's turn, right? Because you know, we 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 kind of we left we left Dan in the dust twice, Tommy once, but Linda we've been catering to a lot. Hey, her mom and dad. Like, think about it. Her mom and dad. Don't you think that she would probably be at the funeral? Because it would be her mom's mom that died. So didn't they just see them? Although, then she says that the mom and dad might be going through rough times, so they might need the vacation in order to come up, but like... <sighs> but Tommy seems depressed hey, and really excited about having his friend over, and Dan's just trying to get his act together. I mean, I mean, all four of them, it, I, it might just end up that all four of the people that they've invited over, that they all come over, it's just... It's one works out. Of the other, I don't know. I this is tough, man. You don't want to leave the child in, in the dust, though. You know, you don't. But and Dan needs a lot of help too. Hmm. So fishing poles, sweater, and blue sheets. I haven't even found any of those yet. <laughs> What's this? Didn't want to bother you while you were working, but didn't want to forget again. Been meaning to ask, have you found any ponds on your hikes, creeks? No rush, just curious. Hmm. Oh, there's the picture of the grandmother, I guess. Um... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think, I think we focus on Tommy. You know, I think that I think that's our going to be our first goal. So we just need to find some blue sheets, which I mean, it might just be these, right? Where are the blue sheets? Oh, oh, oh! Right, right here. And then we'll choose between Dan and Linda, right? Yeah, alright. We'll go over that. Okay. So now we need to find the fishing poles, I feel. Because I, I just... He needs inspiration. He needs to get that, that buck out to avoid humiliation and, you know... Possibly loss of income and loss of opportunity going forward. <sighs> she her she probably just saw her mom and dad, and then her mom and dad going through stuff. I'm sure that they're on vacation anyway. It wouldn't be devastating not to see the family. I mean the fam the f the um. They probably already saw each other. I mean I know it was like a sad occasion, but. Uh-oh. That's the sweater. Where's the fishing poles? Probably... Okay, I, I'm trying to think. Where would they keep the fishing poles? Maybe by the door. No? Just 
is somewhere in the vicinity. I need these fishing poles, right? I can't find them. Maybe it's even tougher in the light here, but usually those would be kind of glowing. Oh, oh, wait, is it over here? Yeah, looks like it. Alright. So that's that. Alright, so now let's uh, read some books here. Diary of Claire Bradford, September 5th, 1961. Maybe getting my thoughts down on paper will help. Make a list. That's what Mom always taught me. So, dear diary, here are all the wonderful things about Roger. He's very handsome. He'll soon be working as a lawyer at his father's firm. Though the job is no gift, he works so hard in college. He might be the only person on earth who loves music as much as me. He especially loves the song I write him. His family has money, which of course shouldn't matter, but it's nice to feel secure. Who wouldn't want to marry someone like that? Claire's falling in love! And Roger's gonna end up being a dick. I have to find the other book now. We need, my, we need to find Harold. Unless Harold's gone. I mean, I, I think he said that he... Oh, no. Oh, here's another clear. December 6, 1961. I don't know why, but I feel like I really get my thoughts together, thoughts together here. That's why this entry isn't always going to be very fun, but fair is fair. I've always waited a day, and there's no use delaying it longer. Here are the not-so-wonderful things about Roger. He can be so self-absorbed, especially when he's working on something. No one will ever accuse him of having a great sense of humor. He's so very predictable. Sometimes this makes me feel secure. Other times, I just feel so bored. I wonder if maybe he spends too much time chasing his father, and not enough being his own man. There. Now I feel rotten. I do love him very much. Everyone has their flaws. Are his so bad? Sounds like a dick! <laughs> Alright, I'm assuming that's it for this area, but I'll keep on looking. What's this? The readers of Eugene and surrounding areas, judging by the turnout, got a rare treat when author Dan Kaplan arrived for a combination reading and book signing. He shared a selection from his most recent work, still untitled and due in story stores this fall and if it was any indication his fans are in, in for a treat although the book is not true, kind of said that okay I didn't actually read that before all right I, th I think we're good I mean it, it, how many more books is there going to be lying around the house you know uh, okay we're gonna go s go whisper whisper Dan I'm gonna tell you a secret. <laughs> Alright, what's happening? Dan knew how important it was for Tommy to play with his friends his age, so he grabbed the sheets and gave Tommy a few tips on the finer points of structural engineering and the self of fort construction. When David came over to the two boys stayed up watching TV and eating ice cream for the past their bedtimes, laughing, playing until they ran out of steam and passed down in the fort. Oh, yay! Tynan and Kelly were surprised to find that they weren't the only guests that weekend, but they were still glad to have a place to stay. Dan and Tynan didn't get as much time to work on their books as they wanted, though they did trade a handful of high-level ideas. That's it. Any little bit counts. As for Linda. Linda never thought she'd be upset about not wearing the hideous her sweater her parents had given her last Christmas, but she found herself eyeing it sadly. When her mother called and Linda had to break the news, she heard a hitch in her mother's voice that worried her. She tried to find out her if her parents were okay, but her mother made a comment about how much the long distance call cost and cut the conversation short. Did the mother not know that her own mother died? Wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. Well, I mean, I guess, I mean, maybe if you're estranged from, or away from your mother, but how many weeks have gone by since the mother died and no one decided to contact her about that? Hold on a second. We'll check her story this far. 
Wait. I had surprise visitors the same weekend. Then she just plans that Tommy could have a sleepover. We still had, had his friend over. Right, they could finish, which wasn't much. Hey, that that last part's very confusing to me. Home to a stunning display of natural beauty. Uh, Ochoco Nat National Forest is a perfect destination for hunters, wilderness enthusiasts, and weekend campers alike. One-of-a-kind rock formations provide exciting challenges for climbers. The, the many canyons offer s uh, scenic hiking experiences, and the swimming opportunities are many. Located less than five hours from Portland and less than six from the central coast, Ochoco is perfect for a summer getaway. For, for more information or to request a brochure, please call the Razor Station at... <laughs> Trying to avoid giving someone's number away. <laughs> Here's your drawing. Let's see. Go over here. Let's see if there's anything over here. Aaron, what's latest with you? I hope you're doing better than I am. I'm going a little stir crazy. Dan loves it here, but he's just riding all day long, so he could be anywhere. I could use a change of scenery. I've walked every trail in the woods and even started a few of my own. It's great getting away from the city, but I wouldn't exactly call this roughing it. Tommy's certainly having a good time exploring the woods. Sometimes we go together, and if I'm in the studio, he knows he can play outside where I can see him, and to stay away from the cliff. Do you remember when we were kids trying to jump the creek in the woods behind the house? I think Tommy's getting into that phase now, climbing trees and all that. Oops, <laughs> I got a little carried away there. You probably don't need to hear about all of our outdoor adventures. Sorry about that. Well, let me know how you're doing. Love, Linda. Little pen pal, stiff. Um. All right, hello, Linda. Um. Yeah, I'll possess. What? I'm going out for a hike. Okay, be safe. And you just have to find something else to go along with that. Oh. Come on. Mom tried to hide it, but I can tell when she's disappointed. I hate that they couldn't come, especially after they tried so hard to make time. Maybe if she'd called before they changed plans, it would have gone smoother. Oh, that's what the bad news was. Okay. The rough patches mom and dad hit without thinking about Dan and me. I should bring that up to him and see what he says. He's mentioned their history before. I'd love to hear his answer when I make the comparison. Can he talk his way out of that one? Wait. I could have blanked out for a second. Okay, so then, alright, so the bad news was that they couldn't actually come. Which was what I assumed was going to happen if I didn't pick the sweater. So, she did know about her mother dying. <laughs> that is... That, that is true. Okay, so my... Alright, so... You can tell when she's disappointed. I hate that with, like, Especially... Maybe she caught... It's impossible not to think about the rough patches mom and dad hit without thinking about Dan and me. I should bring that up to him and see what he says. He's mentioned their history before. I'd love to hear his answer when I, when I make the comparison. Can he talk his way out of that one? That's fucking sad. Okay, let's let's uh, look a little bit more around. See if there's anything else that we could throw in here. Can we go in here today? Three days in, I'm still trying to figure out where to take the new piece. It's changing as I go, which is always exciting and sort of the point. But this one feels a little aimless. 
I keep snapping out of the daze and realizing I've been staring out the window for five minutes instead of working. When we first got here, I was excited to have a studio with so many windows and so much natural light, but now it feels almost like a cage. Why be this close to nature but not be, well, in it? Actually, cage isn't the right word. This place is beautiful and there are so many more trees than back home. I guess it's more of a reminder when it's right there the whole time, not just an idea or something for the weekend. Anyway, back to the painting. I'm not going to get anything done on it sitting here writing. Okay. Oh! Well, Tommy! Oh, wait. Oh. It's the light. Um. Yeah, great memory. <laughs> Oh, like walking down the stairs. There! There we go! Tommy's happy, and that's what matters. Okay. <laughs> we had to find, um... Mr. Daniel. I'm sure is somewhere here. Oh, hello. I've got to stay on the book. This is my chance to do something people remember, something that matters. If this one isn't good enough, there might not even be a next one. Certainly not one without all sorts of publisher strings attached. This is why we saved up enough to take the summer off. I'm out of excuses. Of course, a long weekend would be fun, but that's also the problem. How do you stay hungry when you've gotten used to weekend getaways? How do you recapture that feeling of being a broke college kid chasing a dream? How do you get back out on that limb again, scared it's gonna break, but inching out anyway? Listen to me, wound up so tight. Maybe taking one night off might help after all. Okay. Ty and Kelly just pulled out of the driveway. Still glad they came, but I know it wasn't exactly what they had planned. I think they were a little surprised and bummed out not to be the only guests, and it definitely got into our riding time. Oh, whoops, We did sorry. get one afternoon to fish, but we didn't do much more than talk about our books. We didn't even get a chance to sit down and read each other's pages. Still better than nothing, I guess. Hmm. Well, right. You, you got some work in, not everything. It's all good. Okay. Let's see. Do we have to come over here? I, I just the full circle of coach just walked up here the first time. Hello. Oh, that's the that's uh from earlier. Yeah, you know, it can always be better. Oh uh, wait. What is it again? I was right. Yeah, you know, it can always be better. Okay. So now I have to find some more clues on him. Alright, so I have to find more clues on Tommy and and Dan. Meanwhile, there's your camping pack right here. Okay. Meanwhile, oh, what is this? There's that. Jim said you'd never make it. He said you're a joke. Um, any idea that is not dangerous is not unworthy of being called an idea at all. One page at a time. You could be working a regular job right now. This is an opportunity, not a burden. There is some mixed messages here. He's certainly loving every minute of this. They say my rocket makes it free at Booster Bay. I guess that's a amusement park. A 
Okay, I have to find. One more. I think we have to find at least one more clue for. Hey, mom. And oh wait, did I do this one? Do not fear death so much, but rather the inadequate life. Now I can read Dan's last. Who is right here? Grab some firewood, build a bonfire, and camp on the beach. Grab some firewood, build a bonfire. Campfire on the beach. So the camp, so Linda wants to go camping, which would be a multiple day getaway. Dan wants to just grab some firework and just have a bonfire, probably for one night. Tommy wants to go to Booster Bay. Oh, Jesus. I mean... Fucking, I don't know. <laughs> Because now I feel like I have to prioritize Dan, but I don't necessarily need to. Like, he could go on a camping trip. But isn't this supposed to be a vacation? Like, isn't this just being here supposed to be a vacation? Or is this their, like, permanent moving spot? I, th I thought this was, like... That they were just kind of here as, like, during the summer. So why can't, why can't they just... I don't know. I hate camping, personally, so I, I think that might play a factor <laughs> in my decision-making. Um, do we do we screw over Linda twice? Because I, I don't want to... I feel bad for Tommy. You know, I, I feel bad if Tommy... Because, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm... Sp I, li I, I like the idea of spoiling like a child, but... You know, he... he the just making them happy and like having them have a good childhood you know you, you, that's you, you kind of want that um but at the same time you also don't want to give them everything because you kind of have to realize you can't always get what you want in life so that's a, probably a lesson that Tommy has to learn but he's also hmm, I don't know it's tough it's tough I feel like you have to go with Tommy because the other ones, it's like, all it is, what's this? Blast off at Booster Bay. Come enjoy all the excitement of Booster Bay this weekend. We had a very special discount for all the young astronauts out there. Children under the age of 12 who bring their, their official Booster Bay Astrojet get free admission to the park. Take a flight to remember on our world famous Roos rocket coaster. Explore the inner workings of three model spacecraft in our educational setting in the sky. Treat yourself to burgers, ice cream, cos cosmic cotton candy, and more on the food core of the future. There's never been a better time to visit Booster Bay, and you can't beat the price! Um, like that. That is like I I <laughs> I feel for Tommy. Like that you know, you want to give him you know Fresh air. You wanna give him a fun childhood though, you know? Oh, fuck, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a compromise if Dan goes out and has a bonfire with Linda. I think that is a fine compromise because he has to work. He has to get his his work done, right? But then she's worried that, that I like, guess she wants to go camping. She just kind of wants to relax a little bit. And family should take precedent over work. Ah, damn it. <laughs> Fuck. You know, like, it, it's... Like, it, it's a mixed bag, because it's like... Okay, yeah, you want to spend as much time with your family, but at the same time, you also don't want to not have your book together, and then what if you cannot <laughs> afford... Uh, what if, like, you start losing money because your book sucks and you lose opportunities to continue to write books? Like, what if you're not in that much of a stable situation where you're gonna uh, just let go of your fucking career? You know? Like, that's what I'm thinking. Like, it would be... It's it's so beneficial to everyone. 
when he works. But at least he's compromising some quality time to have a fire. I mean, that's what I'm getting, right? Grab some fire, build a bonfire, camp on the beach. Right, so that's a, that's a perfect compromise. You know? I don't know. I'm not saying Linda's asking for so much. I mean, I I, I, I don't think either of these, any of these scenarios are terrible. But if we had to pick between camping on the beach for one night so that way he could focus more on his book, and then, or just giving up on the book altogether and just going camping for a weekend, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I would, I, I would rather just, because at least he's not being like, no, we're not gonna go camping at all. Like he's saying, we could go camp out on the beach. Like I feel like that's very like level-minded of him. I don't know. Hmm. All right, I'm making a decision. And then we'll do the rocket for Tommy. Okay. It's depressing, but, you know. Let's see. Two books to read, probably. The Diary of Claire Bradford, September 7th, 1961. I realize now that this isn't about Roger. It's about me. I have to decide who I want to be married. To be marrying Roger will set so many things in motion. We'll be a well-to-do couple, safe and secure, with wonderful friends and loving families. I may slowly fade into being Roger's wife instead of Claire, but that was that will be society's doing, not Roger. He loves me too much to do that. What about my music? If I'm accepted to Berkeley, I don't know what we'll do. I can't ask him to quit his job a month after he starts. What kind of couple lives in separate cities as soon as they get married? The decision can't be in the black, the black, this black and white, can it? Position and safety versus a crazy pursuit alone? I is there a way to have it all? Do I even want it all? Will I ru ruin everything no matter what I choose? No choice is clear. Tough choices. So I wonder I wonder if I'm Claire. Because I'm making these decisions for everyone. And Claire had to make her own decisions. Life is about choices. What's this? September 8th, 1961. Roger and I talked every everything over today, and it was a mistake to speak so soon. I never should have brought any of this up without making up my mind first. Now I've only made things more difficult. I guess I was daydreaming, and he asked me what was on my mind, and before I could help it, it, it just came out. Although maybe I wanted it to get off my chest. I told him I wasn't sure it was the right time to get married, and it upset him badly. It didn't matter how many times I told him that I wasn't calling it off, that I just had questions, that I hadn't made my own mind either way. All he heard was that I didn't love him anymore, which isn't true at all. But it didn't matter how many times I said that either. He's gone off for, for a drive. Now I'm here on the house alone, and I think I've made up my mind. I hope he gets back soon, so I could tell him. What a piss baby. <laughs> like, okay, I get it. You know, you hear someone saying, oh, maybe we shouldn't get married. Yeah, that's a big deal and all. But how about listen to your, couple, your, your spouse? Listen to the person that you're marrying. Maybe they have a reason for it, you know? Just saying. I use piss baby as a... Uh, as a term to... As a term for people who just refuse to acknowledge uh, that there's other points of view. And get mad about it when they hear the opposite of what they want to hear. I would love to hear like something really fucked up when they were whispering to him. Dan puts his book book first and explained that he simply didn't have the time for a longer trip. He tried to make it up to them with a one night beach camping trip where he happened to get a new idea for his book. The night off relaxed him and by noon the next day he was back at the time of working with renewed purpose. 
Tommy was so proud of finding the free admission special for Booster Bay that he couldn't understand why his parents had it taken him for free. He then tried to explain the reasons, but it did little good. Tommy perked up when his father told him that he would go before the summer was out, no matter what it cost. Linda was disappointed that it didn't go camping in Ochoco, so, so she went on a day hike by herself just to get out of the house and try to get some of use for her new pack. She was only an hour into her hike when she twisted her ankle on a tree root and had to live back home in pain, alone, and angry. Oh, sorry. I hate to do that to you. What's this? The bottle. Linda and Tommy were getting worried about. So it looks like Dan. Alright. Well, that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let's look at the story this so far for this week. When Glinda's grand we'll go from chapter three, when Glinda's grandmother's funeral was the same day as Dan's book signing and a trip that they planned with Tommy. Dan decided to do the book signing, but also flew in for the visitation the night before. When Linda and Tommy had surprise visitors the same weekend that Dan's friend was visiting, Dan changed his plans to go Tommy so Tommy could have a sleepover, but still had his friend over for whatever writing time they could fit in, which wasn't much. When, when Linda and Tommy wanted to go on a weekend trip, Dan said he could only spare one night, so they built a bonfire and camped on the beach instead, and also promised Tommy that they would go, would go to Booster Bay before summer's end. Uh, so when Dan's drinking began helping his work, but harming his family's life. Oh, Jesus Christ. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. It seems like it's going to go all downhill from here. Be good to one another, be kind to one another, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.